1960 with the aluminum paintings and in 1961 with the copper paintings, he creates three bodies of work that completely transform the history not only of American art but of international art. The black paintings come first and they're the most famous. This is the Fanny Hawk. The painting I mentioned was in the 16 Americans exhibition in Alma in 1959. Um, it is painted with a house painter's brush, which is how he supported himself when he was low on funds in the early days. Um, and so it's the exact width of a house painter's brush. He's using house paint, cheap house paint, picked up from stores on Canal Street in Lower Manhattan. And the only imagery is parallel bands of black paint. Um, the stripes are created by essentially not painting the canvas in those areas. Um, and very importantly is that it's hand painted. It is not taped or made to be perfect. Stella throughout the exhibition you see is very keen on the idea that these are handmade works. These are not machine made works. That's not the touch or the look or the aesthetic that he wants. Now the uh, obvious the sort of imagery, the sort of uh, you know, part, four part uh, sort of cross is one way of looking at it. Um, he said he looked at Abex painting and thought it was always relational. He said you do something in one corner and then you have to balance it in the other corner. And he thought that way of painting was now a dead end, had been played out by the Abex artists. He wanted to find a new way. He said he wanted to pick work that was symmetrical in its imagery and by using the stripes, he said it would push space out of the painting all across the surface evenly and at an equal rate. And so he used these parallel bands to create that effect. It seems to be absolutely on the surface. There seems to be nothing else. It's just a bunch of parallel lines in a cruciform shape. Um, and there seems to be, you know, perhaps nothing else going on. That's how they were interpreted at the time. In retrospect, people often point out, and Frank Stella admits, that there is a huge debt to Rothko here in their luminescent, enveloping, you think of the great late Rothko paintings, but even earlier. Um, and also, the title itself, the Fanny Hunt, this is a line from Raise the Banner High, is from the Horst Vessel song, which was one of the Nazi marching anthems and sort of co-national anthem of the country at the time. Um, that's kind of an astonishing title for a painting, and I think there's several things going on here. Why would you title your works along with another one, Art Like Not Cry, Work Makes You Free, the motto of uh, Auschwitz and other camps, um, and uh, also Reichstag, the famous German parliament building burned by the Nazis in 1933. Part of the answer is Jasper Johns. I mentioned he saw the, what, his American flag painting in an exhibition at Leo Castelli in 1958. So he loved not the flag image per se, although it was a found object image, he liked that, but the parallel banding, the regularity of it. And then as a critic famously said, is it a painting or is it a flag? And the answer, of course, is yes. Um, and that kind of deadpan, you know, it is what it is. Stella famously said, what you see is what you see. That's all there is. He also said, painting is a bucket and a brush and you put it on the canvas and that's all there is. So that's this period of his work that changed later. Um, so it is, in a sense, a banner. It is like, it's his version, as you, you will, of Jasper John's flag. Um, but the other thing, I think, by picking a title that's so provocative, drawn from essentially German Nazi history, I think he's raising his own banner high for a new language of art of which he uh, tends to be and said, he said he's described himself as having a lot of bravado, a lot of chutzpah, a lot of, uh, he's actually used the word arrogant, uh, and he said you have to have that when you're an artist, when you're young and you want to accomplish something significant. So it's really an astonishingly beautiful painting, I think now we see it, uh, you know, we want to see it in more uh, Rothko-esque terms, but he said there's nothing existential in it, there's nothing symbolic in it, there's nothing narrative in it, he seems to have banished all these traditional ideas about painting. Now in the aluminum